Hello, my name is Colin Scott Thompson and welcome to my workshop. Today I'd like to discuss the pilot shoot, the hand deploy that we're using in sports skydiving now, where we came from and where we are now, and the mysteries behind the center line system, your kill line pilot shoot. Why everybody should be jumping with a locking tongue handle. These are frequently called free fly handles. I'm totally against that. It should be a locking tongue handle. The only difference between free flying and flat flying, in my opinion, is the expression on your face. Shortly after exit, if you find your feet are above your head and you've got a big smile on your face, you can tell everybody what you're doing is intentional and you're a free flyer. If you have a look of shock and horror on your face shortly after exit and you find your feet above your head, it's because the other guy's got the timing wrong on the four-way flat flying exit. The air doesn't care what you're doing on the skydive. It's going to be rushing over your equipment with just as much enthusiasm. If your BOC, the pilot chute pocket, is not properly tight and you have a pilot chute that's maybe zero porosity, slippery fabric and packed in the way it could come out prematurely. If you back it up with a locking tongue, whether you're on jump one or jump 10,000, you should always have a pilot chute that's properly secured inside a good pocket with a belt and braces type attitude of a locking tongue. Please watch some of the links that I've put in the description below. Mike Michigan demonstrating the use of a spring-loaded pilot chute like this MA1 in his equipment about minute three in the video he demonstrates beautifully how to deploy a spring-loaded pilot chute with a very lightweight spring without having any delays and there's a lovely movie that they made back in the 60s 70s the gypsy moths there's a link below you should be watching that movie as well search it out I hope you learned something in this video and uh, we're only going to be covering the very surface here Let's see what we find out today. The anatomy of your pilot chute. You've got suspension lines. Well, they're not really lines. They're tapes, but they are equivalent to suspension lines on your parachute. The mesh, the netting, also helps to transfer drag from the fabric down to your bridle. Inside this one, we've got a line, which shouldn't be involved in the equation at all during the deployment of your parachute. And in this case, one tape, some of them have two tapes. They're limited tapes or central tapes. It has a very important role to play. It's pulling the apex, the very highest point of your pilot chute, is displacing it and pulling it down to a sweet point, which is just above the line of the netting. If you can imagine this pilot chute, if we cut the central line and the limited tape or central tape and let the pilot chute fly, it would have a cross-section shape that resembled a party balloon. The shadow it makes at midday would be relatively small. It's projected surface area. They discovered with round parachutes trying to get as small as possible packed volume and still have soft landings to get a bigger projected surface area. When they took the apex, the crown of the parachute, they pulled it down with some lines. It displaced the apex puffing it out. So now the cross-section shape resembled Valentine's heart as opposed to a party balloon. So the shadow it made at midday, the projected surface area, would be significantly more. That sweet point, as you start pulling the apex down, displacing it, for the best performance, it seems, just above the line of the netting is where the apex should be pulled down to. If we pull it down too far, we start losing. So you'll have not very efficient, getting better, 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 best, getting worse, worse, worse. Because once the pilot chute has completed its job, lines are straight, bag opens, canopies deployed. Now the center line is free to have the bridle and bag slide up it. And that's when the center line has a job to do, inverting the pilot chute, turning it inside out, reducing drag. When do people find out that pilot chute's not good? They come rushing in here and say, hey, I need to buy a new pilot chute because my one stopped working suddenly. If it hasn't split in half at the top here because you neglected to inspect it occasionally and a small hole turned into a big one in one jump, 
if you've been jumping at high speed, getting soft openings, and then you do a canopy piloting school or something, you exit and you open at 80 kilometers an hour, the effectiveness, the efficiency of your pilot chute when the apex is pulled all the way down here, it's not going to be nearly as good. So you really want to be sure that your pilot shoots 100%. When I pull this one as far as I possibly can, the amount of extra line is it's really not worth it okay so the best thing to do modify the bottom end making this piece here longer that allows the bag to go further up the bridle collapsing the pilot chute why do i need it longer because i've made the center line longer a properly set up pilot chute when you set it pulling step one there should be no green mark appearing in the window it obliges you to do the step two, pulling everything through. Now, when we look at this, my apex is being controlled by the limiter tape, the central tape. The center line is completely out of the equation. There's no tension on it at all, as it should be. The pilot shoot is 100% performance. It's gonna be doing a good job for you at low speed as well as high speed. This sad thing that I see people doing, flying their pilot chutes, is really not giving you any information. Watch this. What you know about pilot chutes now, and I'll put this pilot chute in a way that it's definitely not set, but I can make it fly. Did that look okay to you? Looked fine. Let's compare these two. This one that's not set correctly. And this one that is. You don't really spot the difference. Because this test lies to you. You're not doing it with tension on the bridle. Okay, The real way is visual inspection. Tension on the bridle simulating a deployment. And we see where is that apex position now right now it's in the wrong place we need to have this sitting in the correct place if i take a pilot chute that is properly set up i'll pull once from here and then i'll take the rest of the line bypassing the limiter tape and pull the rest of the line through that line i want to have way extra surplus to requirement because in the future it's going to be shrinking up the dynamo line that we're using inside here it's quite susceptible to shrinkage doesn't like things after 70 degrees celsius the heat generated as it rushes through the bridle causes this line to shrink so we know that let's put a longer line in and it compensates for that you could say, hey, why don't you use a line that doesn't shrink? The Aramides, the Vectrans, the Kevlar's, the HMAs. Yeah, the, the people have tried that. The problem with those line types is they're very abrasive and they don't handle life inside a bridle so well. They chew the bridle up way faster than the Dynama line does. Dynama, of course, burns things out, especially in these restricted areas. Once you start getting to the confluence wraps, on the inside and the outside here, what you don't see happening underneath there is quite a lot of burnout. So three, four, 500 jumps, you'll be surprised what you find inside here. Bit of maintenance required occasionally. This is a moving part. I lubricate center lines. Just to cut down on the friction gets me a bit more life out of my equipment. So please stop doing this ridiculous flight test and get yourself in the habit of tension on the bridle. Look at this thing. Where is the central part of my pilot chute, the apex? Where is it located? What's controlling its position? The limiter tape. Center line completely out of the equation until its job is called on, which means lines are straight, bag opens, canopy exits the bag the pilot chute is no longer of any use to us so 
everything slides up the center line, turning the pilot chute effectively inside out, uh, reducing its drag. So what type of handle do you have? Some of these handles are just bits of tube. They're recycled from the inside of this thread spool. They're not designed for taking any load. If they do get distorted, they'll crack. To stop them cracking, stop them distorting. You could put a cork inside. You, you need a larger diameter, so get a cork from a bottle of wine or something. Put some tape around it and have a nice snug fit going inside there. That will stop it distorting and cracking until you have the opportunity to get a proper handle put on there. Some of the other tube handles are, are way more robust. They can actually cope with a lot of abuse and not get damaged, unlike your pilot chute, of course. All of them should be backed up with a locking tongue. Whatever handle you choose, because tactilely it suits you best, please back it up with a locking tongue. Um, yeah, these are my favorite. They, they sit in very nice and neat and tidy. There are other designs with double tongues. I'm not quite getting my head around the point of that, but if you have a pilot shoot pocket that is nice and firm and a locking tongue that goes in underneath a flap or into a receptacle, it's going to be fine. You're not going to need both, uh, but hey, why not if you've got it? Don't go for something that's so thin you can hardly get a grip on it. Remember, you might be jumping in a cold day with gloves on and not have the same feelings. This lovely looking carbon fiber handle, somebody's gone to an awful lot of effort to build it. I doubt you'll be able to crack that in normal operation. But I have found that the attachment tape that they use for these rubs through on the sharp edge so they need to do a little bit more cleaning up on these edges to make them nice and rounded and not cut through the attachment tape. Sadly these don't often come with any locking tongue but again no excuse not to throw one on right next to it. So whether you've got a slightly older parachute that is not set up for the locking handle they can all be modified this case the channel that was there for protecting the bridle going to the pin has had some of the stitches removed and another line of stitches added so that I turn this into a receptacle for the locking tongue and we still have enough room for the bridle to exit the pocket and go into the channel. Locking the handle in means your pilot chute is going to be staying in place until you decide it's time to deploy. Of course the technique required, you reach back, you grab the handle, your hand moves down first to unlock it and then you launch it and that launches a blast off trying to throw it to the horizon should be your intention. Of course it's not going further than your fingertips but the intent should be there. If you have a slightly newer parachute. The side channel here is already doubling as a support for the locking tongue. And I'm happy that this is going to behave itself in flight. Of course I don't want to be misbehaving myself inside the aircraft, scraping my back across the seats or the, the floor and dislodging it inadvertently. We've still got to remember what we've got on our back when moving around in the aeroplane. Okay, I'm not using this one, so I'm not going to be leaving it inside there. I remove, slide it out gently. This parachute's going into storage. And I would never store a parachute with a pilot chute in the pocket. 24 hours a day of this pilot chute putting st unnecessary stress on the latex fabric, the spandex. It's just going to make it tired earlier than it needs to be. And I'd like this pocket to stay nice and tight for as long as possible. 
if it does start getting loose initially what can happen is a line of stitches can be removed and we can move this out just a little or may, in this case we could do it down here increasing the distance between the two sides will compensate for the fabric getting a little tired and increase the tension if we have a stretch fabric that would accept that not all pockets are built the same way okay. how are the BOC's made the pockets for your pilot chute the fabric when it comes off the roll like this if you imagine fibers running north and south and west and east if I pull across this way I'll have a certain amount of elasticity when I take it 90 degrees and I pull I have significantly more uh, stretch it gives and returns more when constructing a pocket if you were to fold the material like this up towards the north putting some ribbon elastic through that area there you would mark off your pockets cut them and you've got pockets all the way to the other side of the of the piece of fabric you do it cutting across like this once you've got those made you cut it across here and repeat the process you fold and we're off again you'll have very little wastage of fabric you take advantage of the entire roll however if you were to take the material from the edge fold it over put your ribbon elastic through and do the same thing where you're marking it and cutting it cut here once that's cut you fold it across from the edge again it's definitely more of a hassle and you'll end up getting to the other side of the uh, roll of fabric on your right hand side here with a piece that's too small to be used so you'll have wastage however when cutting it from the side like this the amount of elasticity you have over the mouth is significantly more compared to when cutting it from the bottom folding it up you have less elasticity it's the same fabric but cut 90 degrees different you'll have a completely different result when you have a pocket like this without too much percentage of elasticity across the mouth when it's tired and it starts being a little bit open on the flap unstitching it moving it across a little bit to increase the distance between the two sides and stitching it back down again will make it tight but it makes it tight enough that you can't get the pilot shoot into the pocket compared to cutting it the other way once you move this across when it gets tired you increase the tension again and we still have enough the percentage of elasticity is still high enough to allow you to get the pilot shoot into the pocket and retain it nicely. Attaching the pilot shoot via the bridle to the top of your parachute, in the olden days we'd do it like this. The ring was there so that when the bridle was pulling the bag, it wouldn't pull the parachute through the grommet of the bag. So that's one way. Problem with this design is that ring gets slammed into the grommet and if you have anything of value inside the bag while that's happening you might end up damaging it. In other words a bit of parachute fabric pinched in here could cause some problems for you. Quick solution if you insist on jumping a system like this is put a small cushion it's not going to avoid everything from getting damaged, but it helps a wee bit. Once the parachute's in the bag, you're going to be making sure there's no fabric in that area. The bridle is then threaded on the outside, and your pilot chute gets threaded onto the other end, the other end of your bridle. I'm not so keen on this because it's so labor intensive, and asking people to be careful of parachute fabric in this area it's asking too much of them in most of the cases so 
what I prefer doing is making it impossible to have that problem. When I take a bag, reinforce the area around the grommet and then have an attachment point that's got no moving parts to it. Okay? When the pilot shoe is actually pulling, it's pulling a tape that's attached to a bag and the bag gets pulled off. Once the parachute is out of the bag, it's not going to fall off because this is attached to the top of the parachute. But there's no movement to risk pinching your parachute as it's slammed into the grommet with something. Attaching the bridle coming through the bag and using a link on the other side is a very common way of doing it. Frequently find these links loose. They haven't been tightened in the first place. I tighten it and then paint a red line across so I can see that I've been here, done the job, and it also provides me with a simple visual inspection to see that nothing shifted since last time I was working on it. Notice the link is held onto the bag with two tags of tape. This is to avoid that parachute fabric can get in underneath here and get pinched as the pilot shooters in traction. My preferred attachment is to the exterior of the bag. If the bridle comes down and is split on either side of the grommet and then attached to a reinforced section, the line runs through a wide open grommet into a bridle with its mouth held open. It cuts down tremendously on the friction and we don't have any issues with pinching fabric on the inside. It's your typical vector design, the one-way valve as it were that gets pulled through the grommet means the bridle when it's under traction is transferring its energy to the bag it lifts everything off and uh, does a deployment there's no need for a connector link on this particular design remember it's a number four size grommet if you had this fitted to a bag with a large grommet you might want to think about retaining this somehow because it's really designed for a number four grommet. Here's a question. Why do you think the majority of us choose to use a base of the container mounted hand deploy pilot chute? Whatever happened to the good old days where you had a ripcord and one of these marvelous devices here, the MA1 or, or other spring-loaded pilot chutes? What's wrong with a spring-loaded pilot chute? Anything? And remember, we also carry a spring-loaded pilot chute on our back. It's happily not used that often, but why did we move to a hand deploy? The story I was told was back in the days where the competition was 10-way speed start, and one of the teams one year decided, hey, if we can make our containers just a little bit thinner, the guy right at the end of this line is going to be that much closer to the door exit the aircraft sooner and we'll complete the 10-way speed star faster, win the competition. They unpicked the backpack here and they put the pilot chute into the backpack. Okay, So without the spring, the equipment was just a wee bit thinner. Times nine, person number 10 at the end of the lineup was a body's width closer to the door and if you're trying to shave off a little bit here and there it's a system that worked once they finished the skydive track just a little reach back pull the pilot chute out from your backpack and away you go you start a new trend some people are saying oh it's because you can throw the pilot chute into clear air without any turbulence if you were pulling with a spring-loaded pilot chute and you were perfectly flat yes you'll have the pilot chute in your burble. If you're pulling a hand deploy pilot chute poorly and you let it go too early, it will be in your burble as well, which is why we have this technique of once you've pulled 1,000, 2,000, 3,000 check canopy. Of course, when you pull your pilot chute, you unlock the handle, the intent should be blasting it off to the horizon, not using a technique that a baseball pitcher uses, but your intent should be throwing it as far as possible. Of course, it's not going to go further than your fingertips. But the hand deploy pilot chute is a great system if properly used. 
What's the reason for the Velcro? So only a bit of Velcro on your equipment where if it's a bit worn out, it really does not matter so long as you understand the reason why it's there. They introduced it because people got into the habit of packing with everything nice and neat, no loose ends. And if you can imagine the bridle coming out from here with just enough space to get your pin, as you threw the pilot chute out and this would start loading up, it would load up on the bridle before allowing the pin to be extracted. So to tell everybody to leave some extra bridle above the pin to allow the pin to be extracted first before it loaded up would have been quite tricky. So they put a piece of Velcro and people just thought, well, I must put the Velcro there. I won't bother asking why. And the pin would always be extracted first. And for those of you who've noticed, I continue to close this container the classic way. Um, when I mean the classic way, that's the rooting of the bridle. I refuse to comply with the recommendations that came out a few years ago of rooting the bridle a different way, the French way. And the reason I'm refusing to do that is because, in my opinion, the change was made for the wrong reason. If you're going to jump with a pilot chute that is correctly set, in other words, the central tape is forming the shape of the pilot chute and the center line is completely out of the equation, when this pilot chute is in traction and the force transfers from the fabric through these tapes to the bridle, same on this side, to the bridle, the limiter tape or the central tape is transferring its force to the bridle as well. In that case, when the bridle loads up and starts its work pulling the bridle out and then the pin is extracted, and this section of the bridle here has no change. The pin comes out, the container opens, and the bag lifts off. We've got a nice clean deployment. On the other side, if you close your container with your pilot chute incorrectly set, you might have a green mark in the window because remember, we've talked about that before, the green mark is not a good reference point. It lies to you. As the equipment is used, the center line is going to shrink due to the heat created while the line is running through the bridle from the friction. Um, quite often we find the center line arrives from the factory with the mark in the wrong place. So if you can imagine having your pilot shoot system where you've done your silly little flight test and it appears to fly good, but you're jumping with a pilot chute that is incorrectly set, the center line is forming the shape of the pilot chute. It's displacing the apex. The central tape is not under any load. Okay, When the pilot chute is thrown out and we hit it with that high speed air, the center line is going to be loading. The center line is not attached here at the bridle. It's attached way down inside. So the first opportunity that that center line gets to put some tension on, if you watch a nice tight closing loop represented by my toe, the center line is going to be pulling at the same time as the bridle is pulling and that bridle above the pin will concertina down. And as it does this concertinaing, it's happening like a lightning strike. At precisely the same moment, the external part, the bridle loads up, it rotates the pin through uh, 90 degrees just before extracting it, no matter which way you have it facing, it's going to reorientate. And if this section above the pin is concertine ring down really quick with a beautiful pin protector flap almost hermetically sealing it into place, we're going to potentially have 
this bridle being forced down, concertinering and striking the pin in the same place every time and eventually it will go through and pierce the bridle locking your container closed. We've had multiple situations like this and if you're going to uh, try and avoid the problem by suggesting that we close the container the French way which is no roots, but the bridle is exiting the bottom of the container. Let's close up in the same sequence as before. We pin it. Okay. So I, uh, I have to admit, yes, for sure, if we have that same situation, because if you're jumping a pilot chute that is not in this case, but I'm going to pretend that is inappropriately set and the center line's involved in the equation during the deployment. If this happens again and that section of bridle on the other side of the pin concertinas, it's not going to be risking having the pin go through. But what is happening? We are jumping a pilot chute that is not giving you the best performance. At full speed, who cares? Tie your t-shirt to the end of the bridle, it will do the job for you. But what about this emergency exit? The pilot says, guys, we've got a problem, get out. You look at the altimeter, you're above the red. So okay, I'm gonna use my main parachute. You exit, you throw your pilot chute, sub-terminal speeds. And you've got your faithful pilot chute that's in <laughs> inappropriate for low speeds. The apex is in the wrong place. We need this pilot chute to be 100% set. Center line completely out of the equation, central tape displacing the apex to its appropriate section. That is why I do not pack like this. I want you to be properly educated and have the full knowledge on how to set a pilot chute. And then the routing of your bridle can remain the classic way because we're never going to have this piece above here concertinering because the center line is completely out of the equation until the bag opens and everything slides up. So please, none of these ridiculous flight tests anymore. Check your pilot chute the correct way. That means before you even close your container, your final check, stand on the bag, or at least put one foot on your back. Put some tension on the bridle and look inside. I'm pinching it now so nothing changes. My tape's straight. The central tape or limiter tape is under load. The center line is out of the equation. My pilot shoot is 100% performance. If you're going to rely on the green mark, it could be lying to you. You might have a green mark in the window and your pilot chute will have the apex controlled by the center line pulling it way too low down. Okay, this, The apex of your pilot chute, remember, has to be just above the line of the netting. And when I say above and I'm pointing below, it's because, of course, we talk about the pilot chute in flight. Remember that classic Valentine's heart shape that we're looking for by the limiter tape creating that? If the center line's allowed to get involved and it pulls the apex past its sweet point and we begin to reduce the diameter, the projected surface area of the pilot chute in flight and of course reduce its drag. One of my favorite center lines that I removed not so long ago is this what I call a very optimistic center line. It was green when it was fully collapsed great news and it was green when it was almost set and if you set it correctly actually it was back to being white again okay so these are made by humans and we all make mistakes picture this in the deployment this section of the deployment sequence the bag has just opened so the pilot chute has completed its task line straight bag opens canopies exposed. The job of the pilot chute is almost complete. What happens now is as the pilot chute continues to pull, the bridle slides up the center line 
causing the apex of the pilot chute to be retracted. And it pulls it all the way to the mouth of the bridle, meaning there's no fabric left over, just the netting, and we have less drag. Our parachute is more efficient. You'll see some people flying around the sky with a parachute or pilot chute trailing behind them. And there's a bit of a lip. Frequently, this lip is asymmetric. It will cause the pilot chute to rotate. The center line has not pulled the apex all the way to the bridle. You can't have a center line that is too long, as most people will report. And sadly, what they do sometimes, they'll take this and tie a knot. Please don't do that. Your center line needs to have extra. The way that you make your pilot chute collapse all the way is you increase this length here. The part on the inside of the bridle, if you increase its length, is going to move further up the bridle, further up the center line, causing the pilot chute to then collapse completely. Different designs of kill line systems out there. This one I quite like. A bridle attached to the exterior cuts down tremendously on friction. It means we can run a heavier line because we're not going to be running on the bridle quite as violently as we do on some of the other designs. The stop system, in this case the line, is offset so it makes the bag fly flat behind you. It doesn't turn the bag into a little manometer scoop and spin up, which is an issue more on the tiny canopies. But the disadvantage of this, if you forget to set your pilot chute and you realize you get to the, the closing your container and your pilot chute is still collapsed and you happen to spot it, well done for that at least, you don't set your pilot chute with the bag closed. That loose line, the center line, would potentially be wrapped around part of your parachute and you'd just be tightening a noose around that section of your parachute and create some maintenance expenses. Could be inconvenient. So you must be tuned in again as always. When you set your pilot chute, in my opinion, the best time to do that is just before putting the canopy into the bag. Setting it before you start packing means as you're packing and folding the parachute up, the gravity takes the bag down and you're only going to have to reset it anyway. So set your pilot chute when you want, but the most appropriate time is just before putting the canopy into the bag. Other systems that will allow you to set the pilot chute once the parachute is in the bag already are these totally encased center lines. Okay, there's an advantage. Disadvantage, because everything is so close, the friction is tremendous. So you would never, ever, ever want to run a line like this, like a 750-pound line. You'd always want to be running maximum 550-pound line because down in here, there's a tremendous amount of friction. You need to keep an eye in this area. If you see a small hole developing, take care. It will be time to replace four or 500 jumps on these type of systems with a 550 line. If you run a heavier line, like some are running a thousand pound line, give me strength. It's such a larger diameter. When it runs through here, you're gonna be causing way more friction. And yes, your center line's gonna last, but the bridle's going to burn out way too quick. When you see a bridle that's had four or 500 jumps, you don't really notice because it's just a wee hole here or inside if you look in this area, there'll be a small hole. What you can't see is underneath the confluence wraps and those are classic burnouts that we see, okay? If you find that, no problem, snip it off put a new lower section of bridle in and you're back in business. Always run the thinnest line you can get. My preferred line that I use is the same material we'll, we use for the cypress loops. It lasts 
fabulously. Nice thin diameter, actually works better than the original line that comes with this particular system. Do you really need a kill line, a collapsible pilot chute? In some cases, it's a good idea. If you looked up at the leading edge of your canopy and you saw the leading edge being distorted back because you're flying at such high speeds, the open pilot chute creates a tremendous amount of drag and is distorting your tiny little wing. Definitely you want to get this thing less drag. A larger canopy, it tends to be another fashion accessory. Of course, the sales reps are going to be trying to push you to have this because it's a little bit extra profit involved. I've had people convert from a bungee collapsible pilot chute system, which was way less maintenance um, heavy than this. Back in the old days, it used to be quite popular. There'd be a piece of shock cord, elastic cord attached to the bridle somewhere in this area and pulling the pilot chute to a collapsed position. When you deployed your parachute, the terminal airspeed would stretch the elastic. The pilot chute would do its job. Once the parachute was open, your speeds were lower. So the bungee cord would overpower the pilot chute and collapse it again. I've converted those systems to kill lines and still had a customer complaining that the pilot chute didn't work. My bad. I did not ask him to demonstrate how he was deploying his pilot chute in the first place. And when eventually he told me, when I asked the appropriate question, he said it was like he had a hot potato. He was pulling it out and dropping it and nothing was happening. Well, guess what? He, he was dumping that pilot chute onto his back in the burble. So whatever system you're using, please make sure it's a 100% pilot chute. Always extra center line, of course, and you're always checking this with tension on the bridle. And when you reach back, unlock your locking handle and launch it, you try and throw it to the horizon. Once your hand is open, your heading control, do your count. When you come to the end of your count, if you haven't got a parachute above your head, look over your shoulder and see what's going on. You might just have the pilot should come and kiss you on the cheek and then launch as it comes out of the burble because you change your body position slightly. You're looking at somebody like that. If you look at your bridle, how it's attached, occasionally you'll see the grommet has got a lot of pit marks on it. If your center line has been short for at some stage in its life, which is very likely, during the deployment, the center line is under tension, so it slams itself into the grommet, or rather it drags this connector link into the grommet. If you're unfortunate and you have some of your parachute between the grommet and the connector link, it's going to pinch onto it and potentially give you some maintenance issues. Okay, You're going to have to be patching your parachute. Other places that you're going to find some issues. The center line, if it's attached right at the very top of the pilot chute, as it gets ingested into the bridle, it goes inside and only the center line goes inside the bridle. Some systems, the line is attached to the central tape a bit lower down. So as the line goes inside the bridle, it drags the central tape as well inside and you'll find it burning out and eventually failing. As the pilot chute collapses, this top of the pilot chute slams into the bridle, causing the two sides of the bridle to be forced apart. If you don't have a confluence wrap on your system, that's the tape that's wrapped around here to greatly increase the strength of the structure. If there's nothing there, which you'll find on a lot of pilot chutes, the stitching is going to begin to fail, slowly creeping away. And it's not a place that a lot of people look. So please check that out. When you have a confluence wrap, it's going to last a lot longer, but it doesn't mean you're out the woods. You still need to be inspecting this occasionally. If you're using a system like this with a line that is not inside a channel, make sure that before preparing it for the next jump, 
you remove the twists between the stop tape and the center line. You don't want to be running those. The system will still work, but as this, it collapses after the canopy is deployed, the line rubs past this tape and burns it out a lot quicker. Even if you're getting acceptable deployments, I've, I've never had any trouble before. It's been fine since new. What you don't realize, you've desensitized jumping at full speed, terminal velocity, you throw your pilot chute out, and it might have started life off just within limits. And as you keep jumping and that center line is exposed to the friction, the heat, it starts shrinking. It gets shorter and shorter and shorter. It's not in a five minute period. It gently does it. So without realizing it, you're desensitizing. The apex is being pulled or displaced away from its perfect place and down it comes jump by jump. Like your control lines, your steering lines on your canopy getting shorter and shorter and shorter, particularly if you're running the Dynema line, you don't notice until you put a new line set on your canopy and they say, hey, what happened? That's a completely different wing because now the brakes are back to where the factory intended them to be with your center line. It's creeping slowly but surely and you don't notice. You think, hey, I'm just improving my packing because my openings are getting softer. And one day you go to canopy piloting school or a hop and pop over a football stadium or something, subterminal speeds, you throw your pilot chute out and the apex is here instead of down here, the performance of your pilot chute is definitely not going to be that useful to you. Please make sure each of your components is properly set up and can do the best job for you. Don't allow them to creep out of tolerance. That's it. You've reached the end of this video. Thank you for your patience. I hope it's been of some value to you and you've learned some new things. Uh, next time I'll try and keep it a bit shorter. We'll choose a different subject and see if we can increase your knowledge on another component of your sport parachute. Until then, I wish you all the best. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and give it a couple of thumbs downs. Thank you for bearing with me. Wish you all the best until the next one.